Hi everyone, I'm Ajara. I'm Brandon, and this is how I met my Ugandan wife. Yeah, so we've been getting a lot of questions, and the most question we've been getting is how we met. Yes. So, how did we meet? I'll let you tell them, babe. How did, how did we meet? <laughs> tell your truth. Okay, we met almost three years ago. Yeah? Mm -hmm. We met in October 10th, 2019. Yeah. Yeah. So, you tell them. Tell them what happened. <laughs> so, we met on Facebook originally. Yes, on Facebook. I was part of a, a Facebook group. Uh, it was called African something. I don't know exactly. It, it doesn't exist anymore. We don't anymore. really remember. It was African womb, African something. Right. So yeah. it was a place where you know African Americans can meet Africans and interact and talk about our differences when it comes to culture and dating. Yeah. And uh, one day I was on the page and it said, if you're single, post a bio with a picture. And, you know, that's what I did. And then what else? I'm then, <laughs> <laughs> I'm then, um, I don't really post on Facebook, but what, what do they call it? Monitoring spirit, as you guys <laughs> call it. Like I'm like a monitoring spirit on Facebook. So I go on Facebook, I don't I wasn't really posting much. So on my news feed, feed, is it feed? Yeah, news feed, you were scrolling. The news feed. Oh, she saw all saying, this. News feed. <laughs> <laughs> English is not my friend. So my news feed, and I see this page with that um um head is it headline? Whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Whatever they put there. Like if you're single, post your picture. So I just tap onto this group and I'm seeing all these pictures of what women, men, like they just post their, their pictures. So I see his picture. <laughs> <laughs> so I see his picture and his shiny bald head with a beard. That's what I noticed first. It was his beard and the bald head. So he likes the picture mm -hmm. and I sent him a friend request. And I responded to the friend request, mm -hmm. and then I, I, I slid in her DM and said, and I waved, yes, said hello. Yes, sent an emoji like hello. So we started from there talking. Right, we started uh, texting on Messenger, and then after that we went to uh, WhatsApp, and we did video calls and text messages, and that went on for how long? Well, almost two years. Mm -hmm. So we texted uh, on, on Messenger first for like maybe two weeks mm -hmm. or a week. Then we exchanged numbers. Then we started talking on, on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. We started video calling, texting for almost two years. Yes. So we met, we met after talking for one year. And eight months. Yeah, it was about a, you know about a year and a half. Yeah, about a year and a half. But it wasn't like uh, anything that happened quickly or overnight. It was a long process, uh, mainly because I was stubborn at the beginning, very stubborn and hesitant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who was this? Is <laughs> <laughs> stubborn. He was hesitant mm. uh, about the whole thing because he couldn't he couldn't believe like we are talking and then there was a relationship going on and it was long distance he had not done long distance before right so he didn't trust what was really going on it took him time yes it took me time it took me very time and eventually uh, she convinced me to uh, get a passport he didn't have a damn passport. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have a passport. Mm -hmm. And it took it took him a year. Yeah, because once I got my passport, shortly after that, that's when COVID broke out. And that kind of put a hold on us coming out. I mean, on me coming out there. Yeah, but it took you a year to get a passport. For me to convince <laughs> you to get a passport. 
Yeah, it did. It did. I was very hesitant and stubborn. Uh, but she had a lot of patience. Mm -hmm. A lot of patience. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> when I finally came to my senses. Uh, but I guess the turning point was uh, when she was saying, okay, you need to come out here and see me. And I was hesitant and I told her I wasn't comfortable with it. And then we got into our first argument, I guess you could say. And then um, after we, you know, I guess made up, I decided it was time for me to come out here and see her. I had, you know, been stubborn and difficult long enough. So it was either time to put up or shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we spent those almost two years of talking and trying to find a way of meeting. At first, it was not comfortable coming to Uganda because of what social media put out and all that. So we, were all, we actually, the first plan was to meet in Dubai. Right. Yes, we were going to meet in Dubai. But then, I was actually okay with it, but when I talked to my <laughs> sisters, I'm like, you're not going anywhere, you don't know this man. <laughs> But they are right. Yeah. You don't know this man. You can't just go out there and then meet a stranger. You don't know. Like I talk to him, but I trusted uh, my advice. The advice my sister was that we are giving me. And like you just have to wait. This man is. If he's for you, he will really come. So we talked about it. I'm like, you know what? Yes, we talked about going to Dubai and meeting from there. Actually, that one was either Dubai or Zanzibar. It wasn't Dubai, it was Zanzibar. It was Zanzibar? Dubai was going to be like for your birthday. Yeah. So you're going to meet in Zanzibar for the meetup. But then I changed my mind. I'm like, hey, you have to come here. And, and I was like, uh-uh. Like, I don't want to. And then that's when we got into our, an argument. Uh, our first fight. Yeah, she told me to uh, stop looking for the bad things about Uganda and start looking for the good things. And so... That's what I started doing and I did my research and um, I felt more comfortable coming out there. And then when I finally came out here for my first trip, I realized that, you know, it was completely different than what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I, was, I was surprised. Uh, I fell in love with Uganda, the, the people, the weather, and Hajara. You already know we did before you get <laughs> <laughs> But it was just it was just confirmed. It was confirmed when I came out here in person. Yeah, I think we fell in love. I fell in love, I think, first. Mm. Yeah. Because it was different for me. It was different for me, like how you're treated, how you cared about. It's totally different mm. with how what I was used to. So I felt, I think I fell in love first, and it was not yet there. I wasn't there yet, but she was patient enough to wait uh, for me to get there. I was just, uh, I was moving at a little bit of a slower pace. But well, now he's more in love. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now we're on the same pace. <laughs> we're both obsessed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're both obsessed with each other, but I think patience, uh, communication, mm. uh, resistance, should I call it resistance? Uh, I guess being cautious, you know, you know, taking your time, not being in a rush, because, you know, a lot of times you know situations like this don't end up like this yeah so you have to be careful and you, you can't rush into anything so the moment you see a red flag you know you need to stop talk about it if it can't be resolved then you need to move on but it's, it's not like it's just going to be a, a magical match made in heaven and especially like people who meet on facebook i think we've, we've tried to join our uh, since we started our group We've tried to join other groups for interracial dating and couples and all that. Mm -hmm. And every time I try to, to read through the comments, like it's all about it's a scam, people are asking for nudes and all that. Right. Brandon never asked, you never asked for any nude when we were dating. No. 
he never asked for nudes he never asked for anything it was just talking and getting to know each other and i think if he had asked me for my nudes in the first place or even <laughs> me asking for him for nudes in the first place they, hell no yeah i feel like this is a red flag but it's so difficult when you're meeting online these days it always doesn't end up like this right we just lucky yeah we were lucky and we took our time you know like i said it was like at least a year and a half before we even met in person yeah so we were kind of forced to get to know each other that year and a half because there was no physical contact anything like that it's just video chatting and texting so we really got to know each other as people and then once we met in person everything else just you know took care of itself and even the chatting like we would chat in the first place we would talk like once a week or like once in two weeks yeah sometimes like once in a month but then <laughs> but then it kept on growing to talking like twice a week twice to every two weeks then mm. to every day yeah. to all the time so it, it everything with our relationship and how we met and it's been gradually um growing right from not talking at all from not um talking every day all the time to actually talking all the time so i think patience communication uh don't ignore the red flags if you feel like something is not right it's definitely not right yeah we ignore a lot of our instincts mm -hmm. most of the times but they're always right if that man is asking you for the notes like the first day run sister <laughs> run for your life <laughs> mm -hmm. run for your life yeah 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 so that was the first trip the first trip the <laughs> you know what the first trip i was praying to god like when we were like i agree like to beat and know after buying the ticket after all that hustle of making you calm and then like you're not comfortable i think the first the first fight we had i was like do you think i live in the bush <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like do you think i live in the bush why do you why don't you want to come to uganda do i look like something like something is wrong with where i live or something so it was a big fight and i think after the, that fight mm. i was like i'm going to call you back later yeah yeah and i was expecting her to call me back in like maybe three or four days but it was more like five minutes five ten minutes and i was shocked i was like i thought you said you were going to call me back and you're like i did but <laughs> i didn't think it was going to be that soon though so, yeah but, i mean but i like that i like that uh, you know our fights were short short-lived they're not long drawn out yeah we had to fight i'm like you know what i can't talk to you when i'm pissed i'm going to call you back later i think i was driving heading home so when i go home i was not far from home so i called him back and he was shocked like you mean you're calling me back now and i'm like yeah when did you expect me to call you back like well i'm not used to this usually when we fight in america it takes days for someone to call you back right. like okay well here i am <laughs> I understand where you're scared and all that, but I just had to get over all the the stereotypes, you know, that you're fed in America. Yeah. About Africa and you know Uganda, but if you do your research and and look for the truth, you know, you'll see everything, not just the bad. You'll see the good too. Yeah. And a lot of times, the good will outweigh the bad, especially when you come out here in person. Um, so yeah, I, I I I would I would suggest anybody to come out here. But do your research first you know yeah i think i even sent you that econ thing like where there is a uh, video i think on youtube of econ saying like in africa that the, the diff, difficult thing we almost find which is really hard for us to sell our country like usually we sell out the bad things we don't we don't bring out the good things that are in africa and with america like they cover all the bad stuff and they bring to us only the good things right so it makes people hard to even come in because all they search about or what is on uh internet and all social media are the bad things that are happening in africa not the good things 
So I think that could be a change. Like we start selling the good things and telling the good things that are in Africa. Because once he came here, like this is totally different from what I hear than you, right. from what I watch and all that. Yeah. It's yeah. Totally different. Totally different. People are very nice, welcoming. The weather's great. You know. You know, everything they have in America they have out here. Besides the traffic. <laughs> America has traffic too, but traffic out here is on a whole other level. Yeah, everything is great besides the traffic. <laughs> it's terrible. And especially the area we live at. Mm. Right. It's terrible. But yeah. For the most question asked question, we met on Facebook. Right. In twenty 21. You don't know when we met? Oh, jeez. Uh, you said the year at the beginning of this video. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, when did you meet? Was it 2019? Uh-huh. Ooh, I got it right now. Uh-huh. 2019, yeah. That's when? when? Um, October. Uh-huh. Uh, we met on October 10th. Yes, we Ooh, I got it right. I was almost <laughs> gonna say our marriage day. We got married on the 26th. Yes, we I was, did. I was gonna say the 26th, but I was like, no, wait a minute, it's the 10th. Okay, yes, it's the 24th of October 2019 on Facebook after liking his picture when he was thirsty <laughs> looking for a girl. <laughs> oh, okay. We'll end it on that note. We'll see you guys later on the next video and the next story. When he was thirsty looking for a girl. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>